Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here to talk to you about differentiability. Objectives of this video to examine the definition of differentiability and to graphically identify where a derivative fails to exist and then confirm algebraically. So first let's kind of consider the definition of differentiability. Um, a function y equals f of x is said to be differentiable on a closed interval if it has a derivative at every interior point and if the right-sided limit of the derivative at the right endpoint and the left-sided limit of the derivative at the left endpoint both exist. Okay? Um, remember that if we're talking about a closed interval, uh, in derivative means slope, in slope is limits. At the left endpoint, you can't you can't have a uh, a you know a two-sided limit because if we're talking about an endpoint, um, there is no limit to the left of this value of a, so we only really consider um, the limit as you're approaching from the right. And then over here at the right endpoint, uh, again, the, the limit uh, as you approach from the right isn't really considered because we're cut off at that value at b, so we only really consider the limit as you approach from the left. So if those limits exist, um, then you have uh, differentiability. In short, differentiability is just continuity for the derivative. So a continuous derivative means that the original function is said to be differentiable. Okay. Here's the big idea with differentiability. You want a gradual progression of slopes to change, okay? So if you're changing slope from negative to positive, you want to do it gradually. So negative, little less negative, little less negative, so on and so forth to zero, and then a little bit positive, a little bit more positive, and so on and so forth. So it's a gradual progression of slope. Um, you're not going to just go negative, negative, and all of a sudden now you're positive slope. That's not differentiability. Um, you can think of differentiability to be like locally linear. Uh, what that means is if you kind of zoom in on a differentiable curve, it's going to straighten out. It won't have any instantaneous movements. It'll just be a nice smooth curve, kind of like linear functions are always nice and smooth. They're never, uh, they're never changing directions or anything like that. So to consider differentiability and local linearity, I'd like to look at this example. Um, and it's the absolute value of x plus 1, or not the plus 1 outside the absolute value. And then um, this thing right here, which is the square root of x, uh, x squared plus 0 0.0001, which is very, very, very close to the uh, square root of x squared. And by definition, um, the square root of x squared is positive negative x, which is the same thing as absolute value x. So those pieces are kind of the same. And then the point 0.99, which is obviously very similar to 1. So these functions are extraordinarily similar. Let's take a look at what they look like. Um, I'll put them in Desmos here. So let's go ahead and turn on the absolute value first. So there we go. There's our absolute value curve. And then let's turn on the square root one right here. And they look like they're exactly the same thing. And you'll see it looks like both curves have this little sharp uh, point right here at 0, 0,1. And um, if I keep zooming in, you're going to see uh, they still look pretty similar. But, but if I keep zooming in, you're going to realize that this blue curve, this square root curve, is nice and gradual progression of slopes, right? We're just slowing down to zero, and then we're starting up again very slowly. But this red one, this absolute value curve, is a negative slope, a, a very quick stop, and then all of a sudden, poof, now we're moving in the positive slope direction. This red curve is not differentiable at zero because you can't have a sharp point like that, a sharp change in slope. Whereas this blue curve is differentiable because it's a gradual progression of slope. So we're slowing down to zero, negative, little negative, smaller negative, smaller negative, zero, and then a little bit positive, a little bit more positive, and so on and so forth, steepening out. Okay, so we say that local linearity kind of helps us picture what a differentiable function is. Um, here's a nice important theorem for us. Differentiability implies continuity. Okay, so if f has a derivative at x equals a, then f is continuous at x equals a. Um, the function must be continuous in order for differentiability to even be considered. So if a function is not continuous, if you go and graph the derivative of a function that has a discontinuity, the derivative won't even exist at that point because the function wasn't continuous to begin with. 
On the other hand, if you have differentiability already, if you know it's differentiable, then continuity has to happen because uh, differentiability means the derivative is continuous. And if you have a continuous derivative, then therefore you needed to have a continuous original function. There are a few types of non-differentiable points that we're going to consider. The first is a corner, kind of like what we just saw with the absolute value function. A corner is where one-sided derivatives differ. For example, the absolute value of x, we know that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function is negative 1, but the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the function is positive 1. This is just the slope from the left and the slope from the right. And we already knew this, right? The absolute value function is a piecewise of two linears, negative x and x. Um, and so when you have this left-hand limit, right-hand limit not equaling each other, that's uh, algebraic proof that you have what we call a corner, okay? Corner point. It looks like a sharp edge. It looks a sharp edge. The next one's called a cusp. And the cusp is defined to be where uh, the slopes of two secants approach infinity from one side and negative infinity from the other. Let's consider this example here that's drawn. Um, notice that on this side right here, we've got negative slopes, right? Negative slopes, negative slopes, but they're steepening out. They're getting really, really steep till all of a sudden, it almost goes vertical for just a moment. And so what we would say for this picture is that the limit as x approaches zero from the left of f of x is actually equal to negative infinity because we're still in the negative slope region, but we're getting very, 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 very steep to the point where we're almost instantaneously going vertical for a moment. Um, and then on this side, notice we have positive slopes, positive slopes, but um, over here in the middle, we've got almost almost a vertical slope. The, the point in which the, the, the slope can't even be considered because a vertical line, of course, doesn't have a slope. Um, and so we say the limit from the right of f of x is positive infinity. This time it's positive because we're still on the positive slopes, um, but it's, it's going instantaneously vertical, and that, of course, creates infinity. Um, and so whenever you have the limit from the left and the limit from the right going towards opposing infinities, um, then you have what we call a cusp. A cusp. A vertical tangent is very similar, but notice in this example, um, this slopes the slopes of this guy are always positive. This function is always increasing. And so a vertical tangent occurs when the slope of the secant lines approach either infinity or negative infinity from both sides. So look at this example. This is positive slope, right? Positive slope, positive slope. But we're going to go almost vertical instantaneously for a minute. But notice that it's still all positive. So the limit as we approach 0 from the left of f of x is positive infinity. And the same thing comes from the right. So we're positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, and then instantaneously we go vertical for a minute. So we say the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x is equal to positive infinity. So a vertical tangent occurs when the limit from the left and the limit from the right of a certain value um, are both going to either positive infinity or they're both going to negative infinity. And that's when you have a vertical tangent. Okay. Uh, the last example is just simply when you have a discontinuity. Um, you can't be differentiable at a point where you have a discontinuity. And so if you look at this example, it's a nice piecewise function that creates a jump discontinuity. So if you have a jump discontinuity at x equals 0, then the derivative cannot be continuous at 0. So we say the original is not continuous or differentiable at x equals 0. Let's try an example. Um, this example is the cube root of uh, x minus 1, and it's asking is why differentiable throughout its domain? Okay, support algebraically. So let's go ahead and consider, you know, the one questionable point I'd, I'd say in this example is x equals 1. What's happening to the graph at x equals 1? And in order to look at the, uh, at the slopes, I'm going to first just take the derivative at 1. So I'm going to do the limit as h approaches 0. And it's going to be, um, we're going to do this at x equals 1, okay? So it's going to be the cube root of x, or actually we're just going to, I just said we're going to do it at 1. So it's going to be 1 plus x minus 1. And we're going to subtract the cube root of 1 minus 1. And we're going to divide by h. And this is just uh, 1 plus h. This actually should be an h. Apologies. 1 plus h minus 1 
the definition of the derivative, of course, looking at the value of x plus h plugged in the function. So this is the correct work here. Um, and so if we simplify, this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 and then minus 1 cancel. And the cube root of this guy is just the cube root of 0, which is 0. So I'm left with the cube root of h over h. And I can simplify this to get the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I, if I picture this one to be um, to the 1 third power, and uh, this one right here to be to the 3 thirds power, um, and if I use my rules of exponents, I can simplify to get 1 over h to the 2 thirds power, because I can just simplify 1 third from the top and 1 third from the bottom. Okay. So I have my derivative, and now what I need to do is question what's happening from the left and what's happening from the right. So if I break this off into two separate limit problems, so we're going to break this off over here, and we're going to break this off down here. So we're going to check the limit as h approaches 0 from the left of 1 over h to the 2 thirds. And we're also going to consider, I'm actually just going to do it right over here, the limit as h goes to 0 from the right of 1 over h to the 2 thirds. Okay, so what's happening here is I'm, I'm basically taking an extraordinarily small negative number and plugging it in here into, and raising it to the 2 thirds power. But interestingly enough, um, if I were to rewrite this with a radical, just for a little bit of help, this is actually the cube root of h to the second power, right? So no matter what the sign is of h, it's going to turn out to be a positive number because it's squared. So I know that what's happening in this example here, I'm going to erase this just to fit my work. Um, what's happening in this example here is I actually have 1 over an extraordinarily tiny positive number, right? Which is going to go, and I'm going to scooch this all over a little bit now, and that's actually just going to go to, go to infinity. That's going to go to infinity, it's positive infinity. And like I just mentioned down here, um, you're going to have a positive number here because you're squaring it. This is h squared and then in a cube root. So this is going to be a tiny, tiny positive number, and that's going to go to infinity as well. So the answer to the question is, does this have any non-differentiable values? Yes, it does. And we would say that, and I'm going to add a page here, we add a page, and we would say that um, f of x is not differentiable at x equals um, positive 1, and is that the right value? Um, yes, positive 1, um, since a vertical tangent exists there. Okay, so we proved that the limit from the left and the limit from the right are both going to the same sign infinity, so they're both going to positive infinity, and that proves that there's a vertical tangent there, and so therefore f of x is not differentiable at x equals 1. Again, what that means is that f prime of x, f prime of x does not exist, or well, actually I, I don't really like using that, I'm going to actually just use is not continuous at x equals 1. So that's really what that means when I say the function is not differentiable at 1. It means its derivative is not continuous at 1. So there's some kind of discontinuity. Okay? Let's try another example. This time we're going to do the uh, absolute value of x plus 2 is y differentiable throughout its domain. So again, the, the value I'm going to try to consider here is what happens if x is negative 2? Because that really seems to be the interesting value in this, in this function. So I need to find the derivative. So first calculate the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of negative 2 plus h plus 2 minus the absolute value of negative 2 plus 2 all divided by h. And I'm going to have a lot of cancellations again, negative 2, 2, and then this whole thing goes away. So I'm actually left with the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of h over h. And uh, I'm going to consider this thing from the left, and I'm going to consider this thing from the right. Um, and I already know the answer because we've studied this function very frequently in our course. The absolute value of h over h looks like that weird kind of broken function that from the left of 0 is negative 1 and from the right of 0 is positive 1. But if I want to support this algebraically, I need to break this into two limits. I need to say that the limit as h goes to 0 from the left of absolute value of h over h, and the limit 
as h goes to 0 from the right of the absolute value of h over h. Now I know that the breaking point of the absolute value of h, or the absolute value of x in general, is 0. And so if I'm defining myself to be at 0 uh, from the left, I know that this is, this is going to make a negative h on the numerator. I'm going to use the negative, uh, negative x piecewise function. And I'm going to squeeze my limit in here. So this is right here. And I know if I'm defining myself to the right, uh, the absolute value function takes on positive x or positive h. So this is going to be positive h over h. And this simplifies to negative 1, and this simplifies to 1. And so what I have here is I have limits that do exist. These, these one-sided limits are not going to infinity or negative infinity. They're nice, solid numbers, but they're going to different values. One's going to negative 1, and one's going to a 1. This is justification of a corner point occurring at x equals negative 2. So I'm going to add a page, and we're going to say that f of x is not differentiable at x equals negative 2 since a corner point exists there. And specifically, again, what does that mean? That really means that f prime x is not continuous at x equals negative 2. Okay, so non-differentiability means that the derivative is not continuous. There's some type of discontinuity at x equals negative 2. So that's differentiability in a nutshell. And one last quick thing, the intermediate value theorem actually works for derivatives as well. So if, there, if uh, a and b are two points in an interval in which f is differentiable, that means the derivative is continuous everywhere. That's what differentiable means. Uh, then f prime takes on every value between f prime a and f prime b. Very similarly to the intermediate value theorem for a regular function, but if you define it to be differentiable, then f prime, the derivative of f, would take on every value between those two function values of the derivative. Okay, so we can verify the existence of the derivative equaling some value that we want it to equal.